Coffee Hour. I'm Sarah Golseth. And I'm Rachel Bomberger sitting in for Andy Bates. I almost said I was Andy Bates. That would have been really weird. Because <laughs> in my head, I always hear his name first. Yes. That was well, strange. Hello, Sarah Andy Bates. <laughs> Hi, Rachel. Thanks for joining me today. Uh, Andy is is un- under the weather, unfortunately. So you are my, uh, my, my sitting co-host today. Always, always a pleasure. I mean, uh, not for this reason. Get well, Andy. We love you. But um, <laughs> always fun to sit in a room with Sarah Gelseth for half an hour. <laughs> you know, it's great. Well, we're talking about Lutheran Witness today again. So it makes Yay. sense. It's all good. It's all good. Uh, it is uh, Tuesday, I believe. <laughs> Uh, January 8th, I'm still like on vacation brain, so I'm still not sure what day it is. <laughs> Common malady around here. <laughs> it's weird. It's really weird getting back in the swing of things, uh, especially this time of year. And the weather is just kind of crazy. It's like been 60 degrees the last three days. So it feels like, you know, April. Spring break. And, yeah, it's strange. But uh, so we're actually going to be talking about that in our second segment, uh, Winter Wellness, with our our friend from, from downstairs from Concordia Plan Services. Uh But first up, we're going to be talking about uh, witnessing, speaking of the Lutheran witness and the January edition, if everyone caught our episode yesterday about about, uh, the Lutheran perspective of of missions and witness. So uh, we have the Reverend Dr. Mark Wood, director of LCMS Witness and Outreach and Revitalization, joining us in studio. Welcome, Reverend Wood. Well, thank you. It's good to be with you. Uh, Andy must have known I was going to be here today, and that's why, the real reason he's probably not here. I mean, maybe. (laughs) (laughs) It's just avoiding you. We weren't going to say anything, but now that you brought it up. Now that it's out there. Okay. (laughs) Uh, So, uh, before we jump into your article, um, we were just talking before we went on air about the the LCMSU conference uh, that just happened, and you were the, the plenary speaker for that. Right. We just came back from Fort Wayne, Indiana, where uh, LCMSU, the, our, our LCMS campus ministry, has its, uh, yeah, so every, every two year, so I guess that's what, biannual I think conference. So. I always and, get those mixed up. Yeah, and, they, <laughs> and the theme this time around was witness, and uh, it was just great being with over 300 college-age LCMS uh, members who, who are really embracing the challenge facing the church today, and mm-hmm. they're right there on the front lines uh, as Christ witnesses in the most secular of places in our universities. And uh, just to hear from them and to spend time with them was uh, just a joy and uh, not just refreshing for us, but also encouraging to mm-hmm. see that that uh, the future of our church is bright, yeah. I would say, after, after spending time with them. Well, thanks so, be to God. Yes. So... Uh, Speaking of witnessing the Lutheran Witness, uh, you have an article in the January edition of the Lutheran Witness titled Evangelism. Which, which means good news. Yeah. yeah. And this actually ties in to the Witness Conference because I, a little bird may have told me uh, <laughs> last fall that <laughs> Reverend Wood would be presenting at that conference on this topic. And I thought, well, as long as you're thinking about it, for the rest of us who can't all make it to LCMSU, why don't you write something on this topic for the magazine? And I'm so glad it worked out because the article is really splendid. Yeah, so. <laughs> it is. I think so. Well, well it, I, <laughs> you're welcome. Um, I was I was reading it over breakfast this morning, <laughs> prepping for this, uh, and it's it's I appreciate it because it's from a different perspective. As so often we talk about witnessing of what I have to do and and what what. Um, you know my my things that I have to be able to do to witness to somebody, but this it, it, this article flips it on its head a bit. Well, and it's just trying to gain a Lutheran perspective of, of what it means to be witnesses. I, I'm afraid that most of what we get exposed to in terms of evangelism is really coming from outside of Lutheran circles mm-hmm. and a, a different theological perspective, and we've allowed that to, to not just shape our thinking, but uh, actually discourage us from being the witnesses we're called to be. And, you know, the Everyone is Witness program was developed to uh, to provide Lutherans with a, just a better way to go about being witnesses. One is more faithful to Scripture and confession, and one that's more freeing. You know, mm-hmm. it's it's not a burden to be a witness of Jesus. It's, it's a joyful task uh, where we're invited to join in the work that is closest to his heart, and uh, so let's rediscover that. And mm-hmm. so uh, 
over the past three years or so of developing, everyone who's witnessed have been trying to find a way of expressing it, uh, you know, kind of what they call the elevator speech, you know, just really <laughs> quick snippet. Uh, and, the, and the Apostles' Creed really provided the framework for that to talk about us being, you know, uh, third article witnesses telling a second article story using our first article gifts. I think you're going to need to unpack that a little bit because <laughs> yes. it's, it's well worth unpacking. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, the third third article witnesses, and, I, and that was a, the four hours of plenary at uh, <laughs> LCMSU we'll unpacked it a next, lot. Uh, next, we, like, five minutes. Five minutes. Yeah, get the five-minute version. Okay. <laughs> uh, well, third article, of course, referring to the third article of the Apostles' Creed, which is the work, the person and work of the Holy Spirit and recognizing that. As witnesses, we totally rely on the Holy Spirit. You know, we can't we can't save anybody. We can't convince anybody to believe. We share the Word of God, and the Holy Spirit works faith when and where He wills. And we're just we just go out planting and watering, to use terms from First Corinthians three, mm-hmm. and trust the Holy Spirit to do what the Holy Spirit does. And uh, so uh, we we want to emphasize the role of the Holy Spirit in witnessing, and and embrace it and rejoice in it. Uh, the second article story. Well, you know, the second article of the Apostles' Creed is all about who Jesus Christ is and, and what he has come to do for us and for the whole world. And rather than rely on my, you know, creativity, my cleverness, the power of my own personal story, <laughs> whatever it happens to be, uh, I'm going to tell this story. And so uh, one of the things I, I, I like to say tongue-in-cheek is, you know, it's just too bad that there aren't, aren't more... Uh, Lutherans who were uh, drug addicted, AIDS infested prostitutes before they came to faith, you know, <laughs> makes a much more powerful testimony than, hey, you know, I was baptized when I was three weeks old, uh, and I've known Jesus the rest. Of, well, you know, but those first three weeks of my life, I was really bad. I mean, really bad. <laughs> so we need more more Lutherans in the gutter, is what so, you're saying? <laughs> you know, but we don't because we have a much more powerful testimony. Uh, in the testimony of Jesus Christ, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. in his story, than we can ever craft with our own experiences. So let's stick to that. Tell the second article story. And first article gifts, well, that's the um, everything God's invested in us mm-hmm. so that we could be his witnesses. Uh, from, from the air we breathe, to the hearts that beat, to the minds that he's given, as Luther calls our, our reason and senses, and his explanation of the first article. All that's been entrusted to us so that we can serve our neighbor, uh, particularly serving our neighbor in that most important work, telling him about Jesus so he too can share an eternal life. So. Absolutely. Why is it... Uh why is it so hard for us to do this? Because the way, I mean, <laughs> the way you explained it, it sounds, it sounds fantastic. Like, let's and all go easy and easy, <laughs> but, but it, it's not, I feel yeah. like, you know, why, why is this so challenging for us? Um, and I don't know if it's, if it has anything to do with our culture. I feel like this is probably something that's, that's been through time. Mm. Maybe, I don't know. Well, the, the overall title of the presentation I made at, at, LCMSU is one I've been working on for a while, and I hope to make into a book someday. It's uh, <laughs> sharing the simple gospel in a complex world. Mm. So the world is complex. Well, why is it complex? Well, let's get down to you know the brass tacks. It's a fallen, broken world, mm-hmm. and we're fallen, broken people. And that's what all of a sudden becomes a simple task, a joyful task, becomes a difficult task and an onerous task because we're sinful people. And we're broken people. So one of the things we, we like to emphasize, and everyone is witness, and, and I talk about a lot, is let's, let's understand that we're broken people going to broken people. Mm-hmm. The difference between them and us isn't a degree of brokenness. It isn't we're better or smarter or better looking. Well, some of us are. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we're all on radio yeah. for a reason. <laughs> okay, yeah. But it's we're broken people who know the healer. Mm. You know, and we want to bring that good news of a healer to the broken people in our lives. Uh, so, so uh, get it's it's not. Sometimes I think we're afraid to witness because we come across as we're better than you, mm-hmm. or we got our stuff together, and we know better. Yeah, and and maybe we're afraid that people are going to point out our weaknesses, our failures, our sins, our brokenness. But let's just go there in that brokenness. Mm-hmm. Uh, we don't have to be super Christians, uh, mm-hmm. to go tell people about Jesus. Mm-hmm. We just have to be 
healed people, you know, forgiven people to go talk about healing and forgiveness. Yeah. Well, and it's, and it, it ultimately isn't about us anyway, right? Well, it's, no, it's Jesus' story. <laughs> but, but Jesus' story includes us. That's true. You know, we have an integral part of his story because he came to save us. Mm -hmm. You know, so uh, it's not that we're detached from the story. It's just when we put emphasis back on Jesus, his story becomes so much grander and greater than our stories. Yeah. So, oh, go ahead. So quickly, I'm going to throw to you a question that Andy and Sarah asked me yesterday. Oh, boy. Hmm. <laughs> what is the Lutheran distinction when it comes to evangelism? Wow, you want me to do that quickly? Yeah, okay. yeah, I've got about 40 well, I mean, seconds. 40 seconds. <laughs> Sum up. <laughs> I think that the Lutheran distinction is, is the reliance on God's word and his gifts and his sacraments rather than on my story, on, on my experiences, on what I do. It all goes back to what Jesus has done for us and what the Holy Spirit is doing now as he brings Jesus good gifts to the world. Absolutely. Amen to that. Uh, and we, we are going to be all out of time, so I won't ask you another question. <laughs> <laughs> Got like five more. Uh, yeah, I know, but uh, that's it. We'll There's do it again sometime. We will do it again sometime. <laughs> uh, Reverend Dr. Mark Wood, thanks for joining uh, us in studio today to talk about your Lutheran Witness article. Glad to be here. And Rachel, uh, you'll be back with me on the next segment. I will. But thank you for being with me. Oh, I appreciate so it. <laughs> You're listening to The Coffee Hour. I'm Sarah Golseth. And I'm Rachel Baumberger. Bum, bum, bum.